The worship leader whose performance on America's Got Talent goes viral with almost 50 million views. Plus, see how this couch-bound ballerina got back on her feet. It was the Lord. I heard, drop it. I've got this, I've heard about this, I've got it, you're healed. Those stories and more on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. It's a dreams can come true story. Almost 50 million have viewed on Facebook and almost 5 million have watched on YouTube. Last week, Michael Ketterer, a worship pastor and former member of United Pursuit, performed to love somebody on America's Got Talent. His rendition of the Bee Gees song wowed Simon Cowell so much that he hit the golden buzzer. Now, if you don't know, the golden buzzer is a feature that each judge can push only once in a season. The buzzer sends contestants straight to the live shows of America's Got Talent. So well, Michael's talent is truly <laughs> exceptional, but his personal story is even more so. Here's what happened before and then after his performance. Tell me what the thought process was. What's, what's the ambition, the dream here? Well, um, my family's my reason why I'm here. My wife and my six children, especially because my children came out of foster care. When you're surviving, you can't dream. And so I'm here because I want to show them that if their dad can live out his dreams, then nothing's impossible for them. being honest with you because you were so nervous I was concerned for you but I think sometimes actions speak louder than words genuinely mean this is special and everything was perfect you deserve it i really mean that well there's a golden buzzer moment for the uh <laughs> ages and maybe golden buzzer is going to come yeah. into our language you can watch michael's entire performance on america's got talent by going to our facebook page and that is a wonderful it thing. really is a wonderful thing it was quite a moment and you'll be touched well in 2013 a boy named davion only made headlines when he stood in front of a church in saint petersburg florida and pleaded to be adopted davion was desperate he He'd been in over 20 different foster homes. Well, the video went viral and over 10,000 people responded. A dedicated caseworker named Connie Going adopted him. It's been five years and Davion's making news again. When we first met this young man nearly five years ago, he was aging out of foster care. Davion only was 15, standing in front of a church searching for a family. I'll take anyone, he said, old or young, dad or mom, black, white, purple, I don't care. I just want people to love me for who I am and love me no matter what. This is the place. Today, he showed us his forever home. Three years ago, he was adopted by the Going family. Without them, he says he probably would have dropped out of school. If you are in foster care, no matter how old you are, don't let this system decide what you do in life. Stand up straight. And here they are, getting him ready for his high school graduation. 17 years in foster care. <laughs> a lot of loss and a lot of trauma, a lot of anger, um, but we talk and we talk and we talk until it's done. Crossing the stage tonight, he not only gets his high school diploma, but a scholarship too. He'll study to be a chef. And in the seats, he has something he's always wanted, a cheering section that won't ever quit. It's hard to explain love. You can't really explain love, but it's, it's that feeling you know when someone truly cares about you and they'll make sure you're okay regardless. Uh, we wow. all need to be adopted. That is a wonderful thing. Yes, we all need to be loved. We all need the sense that we belong. Yes. Uh, there's a home to go to, uh, a place that's full of love and care and concern, uh, and yay. Boy, th this was such a picture, I think, of 
how broken the foster care system is and being able to supply that for children in our country, but how amazing it is when a family steps up and says, we want, we want you, <laughs> you know, come on over to our team. And the difference it makes in the life of a child is immeasurable, really. Awesome. Awesome. Well, did you know the emoji with the great big heart eyes? You need a few of those to describe this next story. Two of the most famous babies in modern history just met, and the pictures are absolutely adorable. Watch this. It's that baby face we all know, the Gerber baby since 1931. The company once writing babies are our business, our only business. It was a sketch of a real baby that won a contest back then, that baby Ann Turner Clark. She's now 91 years young. Gerber selecting a new Gerber baby every year, and we reported right here the baby who won this year, Lucas Warren from Dalton, Georgia. The first Gerber baby with Down syndrome, and Lucas's mother, Courtney, always remembering the nurse at the hospital. Our NICU nurse told me, treat Lucas like a normal child, because that's what he is. She said, raise him like you would a typical child, and he will bless your life tremendously. That's the words I live by. And over the weekend, we learned of a remarkable moment. Their baby Lucas, the current Gerber baby, meeting the original, Ann Turner Clark. Lucas blowing her kisses. His parents say there was an immediate bond. And Ann's grandson, Chris, posting this photo online, writing, pretty cute, we all agree. Uh, that's a photo for the ages, Unbelievable. too. Unbelievable. That is. I wonder if her old age is due to eating a lot of pureed carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Not the peas, that's for sure. Not the peas. <laughs> But what a beautiful woman and what a precious baby. I mean, that is a moment to be admired and recognized. And so we wanted to share it with you today. Well, Iris Global, a ministry to orphans and street children in Mozambique, is calling for prayer in the face of possible attacks. Islamic terrorists are attacking villages in their area, reportedly killing 20 people. Last Sunday, Heidi and Roland Baker alerted their friends of the impending danger and word quickly spread on social media. Soon after the fighting began, the Bakers began moving their 250 Harvest School students and staff to Johannesburg. She and Roland have opted to stay put for the time being, and Heidi posted this video a few days ago. Hi, I'm Heidi Baker here in Mozambique. It's been our home for the last 24 years, and we are calling for prayer. We're asking you to just intercede for these beautiful people. There have been extremist uh, people from another faith that have been burning village after village. They've been raping and uh, murdering people. And it's a very, very challenging time. And this is not our time to retreat. This is our time to advance. And we need your prayers. We need you to pray that all the demonic powers of hell just be broken in the name of Jesus. Every murderous spirit off in Jesus' name. And there be great protection over every one of these villages, these beautiful, beautiful people that are following Jesus. Over a million of them have come to know him as their savior and, and many on the way. We need you to pray right now. Well, let's do that right now. Let's just pause and pray and pray for protection there in Mozambique. Lord, we just join in Heidi's call and call to you because you are the Prince of Peace. And so we just ask for peace for Mozambique. We ask for peace for those who are attacking these defenseless villagers. Lord, send peace to them. Let them see the error of their ways, let their eyes be open that they may understand. And now, Lord, let the hedge of protection be strong. Protect your people there, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We'll have updates on Heidi's situation on our Facebook page and also on CBNNews.com. Well, with the passing of Billy Graham earlier this year, some wondered whether crusade evangelism might be a thing of the past. Harvest America, a one-night event in Texas, proved that it's alive and well. John Jessup has more ab about a movement to inspire hope and revival. Songs, testimonies, and praise filled the stadiums, 
people rock to the beat of Christian artists like Crowder and Switchfoot and raise their hands and voices in worship choruses led by Chris Tomlin and Phil Wickman. This is all the vision of Greg Laurie, pastor and founder of Harvest Christian Fellowship. One of the points I'm making is, you know, is Christ living inside of you? And I would pray also for my Christian friends that come, that they would go out with a sense of revival in their life. The free event also streamed live on the internet to thousands of churches and homes. It featured different speakers and ministries and videos like this one, which paid tribute to Billy Graham, a friend and mentor to Lori. This torch of proclamation evangelism, as I like to call it, needs to be passed on. And I don't think anyone will rise to the level of Billy Graham but I think God could raise up thousands of Billy Grahams, if you will. In turn, Lori teamed with local churches and young Christian leaders like this group of about 40 to 50 millennials. He met with them before the main event about using their influence to share the gospel. It's a message that resonated with others too, like Breege, who recently abandoned a drug addiction and dedicated her life to Christ. Being saved, it doesn't matter where you came from, where you start, where you are now, you know, we're all, we're all taken care of in, in the love of God and that's just, that's relieving to me. So last year I helped as a follow-up counselor. Um, in fact, my son actually came to faith last year at the Harvest America Crusade. So there's a little personal part for us in this event. For the organizers and participants of this event, they're hoping Harvest America provides a model for unity beyond the four walls of the church, something that they can take to the rest of the country. John Jessup, CBN News, reporting in Arlington, Texas. Well, the night was a huge success. 35,000 people attended and over 100,000 watched the live stream event. Over 2,300 people came forward at Laurie's invitation to accept Christ, and another 875 salvations were reported from online viewers. So God showed up, <laughs> the Holy Spirit breathed on it, and lives were changed for yeah. all eternity. The, the gospel is the power of God. It's yeah. that proclamation of the good news. It sets people free. Well, coming up, see how a dog named Buzz taught this man a valuable lesson about following God. That's up next. How do we follow Jesus when we can't see him? Pastor Ken Graves of Calvary Chapel in Bangor, Maine, uses his dog Buzz to teach us a simple yet profound truth. Take a look. In Matthew chapter 4, we have the record of Jesus Christ calling Peter and Andrew. And his invitation to them was, follow me and I will make you. Of course, the rest of the sentence is, I'll make you fishers of men. But the focus of the call from Christ was to follow him and let him do the making. Now, interestingly, that there was an expression among the Jews that you would learn in the dust of your rabbi. You go where he goes, and you watch, you learn. Well, I got this dog, Buzz, and he's a great dog. And he has so committed to following. He is so committed that where I go, he will go, that it is hard to shake him. It doesn't matter even if I climb a ladder or do something else that someone with an opposing grip can do. That dog will find a way to do it because he believes that's his place. It is so with us, our place, is following our master. For us, he's not physically with us. We don't have his body to look at or his feet to see and step where he steps. But for you and me, we find him and we look upon him. As he is revealed in the scripture, we have his mind and his heart recorded for us. God has showed us all what he is like. God has texted humanity down through the ages, has delivered written text revealing who he is and how he is. And it is our duty to read it and find there the very heart of God, to know him in order to follow, and to follow in order that he could make us what he wants us to be. Boy, that's something to contemplate and think about, isn't it? We follow and then he makes us what he intended for us to be. So first decision comes on our end. 
will you follow Jesus? And I think of that, that song, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. We need to be like Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Up the ladder, down over the, the ladder. ridge, down, down the, the ladder. <laughs> uh, and the other part of that, God won't send us into any place that he hasn't already gone ahead of us. Uh, when he called his disciples in Galilee, he'd already gone ahead. Uh, when he calls us to take up our cross and follow him, he's already gone ahead. He's already done these things. He's already been through it. So he knows that he can see us through. And it's through that following that we get remade. Uh, so often we think, well, we've got to clean ourselves up or we have to do more for Jesus or we have to get perfect or something like that. No, it's in following him that the transformation happens. Uh, and it's, it's very simple. Just model what he did, how he spoke, how he reacted, get his mind and everything else will follow. Well, up next, a former professional ballerina develops strange symptoms. I couldn't see, I, mean, I saw spots, and I was really dizzy, but mostly I was chair bound. See what got this dancer back on her feet. Plus, we're gonna be praying for you and your needs. Stay with us. Donna Martelli lived to dance for years on stage as a professional ballerina, and then later in life as a ballet teacher. So when she developed symptoms that doctors couldn't diagnose, she was confined to a chair. And then, two and a half years later, Donna heard a voice telling her, you're healed. Donna Mortelli has dedicated her entire life to perfecting the art of dance. A professional ballet dancer, she performed around the world until retiring from the stage at age 33. Then, in 1988, she felt God's calling to start a dance program for children and adults called Beautiful Feet. I set up the bar program completely that the Lord gave me, wrote the manual, trained instructors. As with her ballet career, she gave it everything she had. I was teaching like every day, creating choreographing classes and putting it all together. And I just kept going and going and going. The more she poured herself into her students, the more frustrated she became when they didn't take it as seriously as she thought they should. I was stressing about it, really stressing about it. I let it affect me personally. I'm like, why can't they do this? For Paul, Donna's husband of nearly 40 years, it was nothing unusual. Like most workaholics, they seem to have a difficult time understanding people that aren't. Then in 2015, after 27 years of running the program, Donna started slowing down. Paul thought it was just signs of age. Sometimes I would uh, caution her about, you're going to make yourself sick. Even Donna thought she heard God tell her to stop during her prayer time, but she kept going. Then one day in class, I was leaning over teaching, and all of a sudden I couldn't see. I, mean, I saw spots, and I was really dizzy. I thought I was going to faint, and I'm like, I don't have any balance, and I'm moving around. I hope my praying that my students wouldn't notice. Over the next few days, her heart rate became elevated. She also developed insomnia and a host of other symptoms. I started itching all over, dizziness, other allergy symptoms, congestion and my eyes were blurry, my vision was affected. The symptoms went on for months until eventually she had to give her classes to other instructors. Meanwhile, doctors could find nothing wrong. I was confused, distressed, depressed. Taking her to the doctors, left and right, appointment after appointment, and I'm beginning to wonder, Lord, what's going on here? I mean, is she going to die? The couple asked friends from church to pray with them for healing. I know people were praying for me, and they were warring for me. And sometimes I would feel it, you know, and I'd get a little remission. But mostly I was chair bound. A year after the symptoms began, Donna saw integrative nurse practitioner Robin Eldib 
who found that Donna had abnormally high levels of cortisol, the stress hormone. When they stay in that heightened response for a long time, then they will start to wear after a while. And then there's different stages that are even worse than the one she was in, where they really start to go down. And then you really can have a crashing. Donna was sent home with supplements and told to rest, but neither offered her much relief. Most days, she couldn't even leave the house. I had fatigue, like it wore me out to go upstairs to the bathroom, literally. And I'm saying, Lord, how can I serve you from my chair? Having suffered for two and a half years, Donna wondered if she would ever find an answer. Then, on August 28, 2017, she mustered up the energy to go to church with Paul. There was praise and worship, they're singing, I'm praying, and I said, Lord, please take my pain, please take my body aches. And very, very clearly, I heard from this side, that's, it was the Lord, I heard, drop it. I've got this, I've heard about this, I've got it, you're healed. The scripture, cast all your cares on him for he cares for you, came right to my mind. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm gonna drop it. It's yours. Within hours, her symptoms began to subside. First it was the allergy symptoms, and then the vision and the, the dizziness, the seeing spots, then the aches and pains. 24 hours later, I was, I was healed totally. I mean, I would had my old energy back. Very, very positive last time I spoke with her and felt like most all of her symptoms had been resolved and doing much, much better. After a few days, Donna went back to teaching a full load of classes. Now she makes sure to rest physically, but also to give God control of her life. Before, I would say, well, I did this and I did that, but and now I say, the Lord did this through me. The Lord gave me this program. The Lord creates my classes because He does. What I learned out of this, and I think what Donna has too, is that we, we need to give everything over, the mundane as well as the big. I know that He is very present always. And He is working through me. It's all His work. It is not mine. Uh, Stress-related illnesses are rampant in our culture today, and medicine is now telling us that it leads to heart trouble, it can lead to arthritis, it can lead to inflammation, it can lead to a whole host of things. But here's what the Bible says, cast your care upon the Lord, for He cares for you. Don't think that it has to be a moment of disaster. Uh, think of it on every single waking moment that He is watching over. He is counting every hair on your head. He knows everything about you, and He cares deeply for you. And all He's waiting for you is for you to drop it, for you to give it over to Him to say, I can't do this, but I know you can. Will you help me now in the little things of life and the big things of life? He wants to be there. Now, Terry and I are going to pray for you, and what I want you to do is, in an act of faith, lay your hand on that area of the body that needs healing. If it's throughout your body, lay your hand on your head, and particularly those who are carrying stress, carrying all the cares of this world, uh, let's pray for you, that God would come to you right now and bring you comfort. Let's pray. Lord, we lift the needs of the audience to you, and as people are laying hands on that area of the body that needs healing, we come into agreement. We say over them, be healed now in Jesus' name. And for those who are carrying worry, anxiety, stress, all the problems of, of this world, we just speak grace and peace over them now. And we ask that you carry away all this anxiety, all the stress, everything related to it. Let them have peaceful sleep. Let them have joy in the morning. Let them have joy throughout the day. Be with them, Lord God. Be with them. Terry, God gave you something. There's somebody, you, all of your stress comes to you in your shoulders and your neck. And you, it's so bad right now, you can't even turn your head freely from side to side. 
Jesus is releasing you from that right now. But he's also teaching you to live differently with regard to your stress. Just let it go and receive your healing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Isaiah. For I hold you by your right hand. I, the Lord your God, and I, and I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. 